Is Christianity the white man's religion? Let's survey through the Bible and church history to answer that question. And I'll show you the role that Africa has played through the narrative of the Bible. To say that Christianity is a white man's religion, it implies that either Christianity was made by the white man or it was exclusively made for the white man. This can't be further from the truth, so stick to the end to find out the real roots of Christianity. Let's start in the beginning. God creates the world, but the narrative centers around a garden, the garden that God planted, the Garden of Eden. Where was Eden? Given the clues in the Bible, it's very clear that it was in the east and that four rivers flowed from it. Most Bible scholars, backed with archaeological evidence, seem to think that it was located in modern-day Iraq. God chose the Middle East as the staging area for his story, for mankind and creation. Get it? His story? Fast forward a few generations and we come across a man called Abraham, the father of faith. He is recognized as the father of faith for Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Again, God calls out Abraham from the Ur of Chaldeans, which is in modern day Iraq, and tells him to go to a place that is set out just for him, the promised land in Canaan, which is in modern day Israel and Palestine. And Africa plays a large role in the narrative, even from Genesis. Abraham flees to Egypt escaping famine and some Jewish scholars even suggest that Abraham spent 10 years in Egypt being well looked after. Funnily enough, when Isaac, Abraham's son, faces famine, he also wants to run away to Egypt but God tells him not to, which shows that Egypt was a place to run to in a time of famine, as we'll discuss later in this video. On a side note, did you know that the Egyptians spoken about in the Bible would have been dark-skinned people? and not those that we see portrayed in films, etc. The Arabs only arrived in Africa in a big way in the 6th century AD. When you see Egypt and other African countries mentioned in the Bible, they're talking about black people predominantly. And funny enough, Egypt was the hub of diversity in the ancient world. The funny thing is that it's actually well documented that in the ancient times, race wasn't much of an issue. Funny enough, racism is actually relatively a new phenomenon in our journey as human beings. <coughs> if you're getting any value from this video, hit the like button. It helps this video tackle the YouTube algorithm. Going back to Abraham, he's given an Egyptian concubine, Hagar, by his wife, with whom he fathers Ishmael. Ishmael eventually becomes the father of the Arab nation, as God had promised to make him a great nation, even though he wasn't the son of the promise. Let's fast forward again to Abraham's great-grandson, Joseph. His brothers sell him off into slavery, Guess where? Egypt. Even though Joseph is falsely incarcerated, God allows him to slowly rise up in the ranks to the point where he becomes the sort of prime minister of Egypt, positioned well once again to rescue God's people from famine. It is in Egypt that the family of Israel took refuge. Unfortunately, they overstayed their welcome and ended up being slaves in Egypt. Africans holding the Israelites as slaves for about 400 years? Then God raises up Moses, who is educated and raised by the Egyptians. He is the one to bring freedom to God's people. Then eventually, after 40 years, they finally make it home to the promised land. Now, why am I sharing all this? The roots of Christianity as a world religion are not founded around any Western nation or any Western ideology. The roots are firmly Middle Eastern, surprising you with a lot of African influence and involvement. This is well documented with history going back over 6,000 years. Now when we jump ahead to the New Testament, that is when we see the Western Hemisphere get involved in the narrative of the Bible. But not as bastions of righteousness, but rather the antagonists. Similar to the Egyptians in the time of Moses, the Roman Empire has got Israel under subjugation. They are under Roman rule, or should we say, Italian rule. Say what? And this is not the first time that Israel has fallen under Western control. The Greeks or Hellenists under Alexander the Great invaded Israel. And Israel was under their rule and territory for about 269 years. This is during the intertestamental period, which happened to be another 400 years where God was silent. This is the period between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. The Jewish people in Jesus' time were looking forward to a messiah who would come up and free them from colonization by the Romans. 
Unfortunately, that's not what they got. Jesus came, born in a manger to a virgin mother, not the glorious arrival of the king that the Jews expected, even though it was prophesied centuries earlier. Jesus as a young child found himself and his family having to escape for his dear life by a power-hungry Jewish vassal king. Where did he go to? Africa. Jesus, as far as we know, never stepped foot in a European city or town. And yet he spent some of his early years in Africa. The crux of the situation is that Christianity began in a Roman-occupied Palestine with Jewish founders. Before the gospel even went into Europe, I'd like to contend that it went to Africa first. As you may or may not know, an African called Simon of Cyrene was actually forced to carry Jesus' cross with him to Golgotha. And after Jesus resurrected and ascended into heaven, Philip miraculously got the opportunity to preach the gospel to and baptize a man from Ethiopia. He was actually like the minister of finance for Ethiopia. He received the gospel with such joy that I'm sure he preached the gospel all the way from Israel to Ethiopia. Then most likely to the queen of Ethiopia herself. Maybe that's why, to this day, Ethiopia has one of the oldest Christian communities and Christian churches. The same can be said for the Eastern Orthodox Church, which existed in the East way before Christianity became a staple in the West. Even though Christianity was formed in the Middle East, it wasn't meant to end there. It was meant to be spread from first the Jew and then to the Gentiles, from Judea to the ends of the world. All nations are called to be disciples of Jesus. And that's why the gospel is so great that while it has its roots in Israel, it is for everyone. It is for one and all. So is Christianity the white man's religion? Yes, it is. But it's also the black man's religion. It is also the Indian man's religion. It is everyone's religion. Did you know that there are more Christians in Africa than there are in Europe? And did you know that there are also more Christians in China than there are in the whole of the United States of America? This thing is bigger than it seems. And it's unfortunate that Christianity has been put into a Western box that it was never meant to be in the first place. It is everyone's religion. But guess what? It is not just a religion either. It's a relationship with the God that created the universe. God loves you so much that he orchestrated time and history so that you could be listening to this message right now. He is calling you like he's called countless others to follow him and to be a part of his story. A shout out and a thank you to Lindogu Le Hlachwayo. Your comment led to the recording of this video. And for everyone else watching, what are your thoughts? Leave your comments down below. You never know, you might end up getting a shout out in a future video. So big questions still remain. Firstly, how did we get white Jesus? And secondly, how did Christianity end up being labeled a white man's religion? Click or tap the screen below to watch the second video in this series as we find out how Christianity was labeled the white man's religion. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.